wineaccess.com slash ham, where you get 20% off of your first order. We got sent recently some bottles of Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. I love a good Noir. Pinot. Noir. This uh, Domain Nico, I think yeah. I'm saying that right, is fantastic. Cam Akers, Achilles injury, John. Um, major Rams news. And it happens, you know, right as we approach the opening of camp. And it happens to a team that we think is one of the best teams in the league. And this is a guy, as you reminded me before we started this podcast, their second round pick. But it's it's a reminder of what happens in football. I think we kind of forget in the offseason. Maybe forget's not the word, but you just start building teams on paper, going nine wins, ten wins. That's going to be a tough week four game. That's going to be tough week 16. Oh, this matchup, Monday Night Football week eight. I bet they're going to flex to this game week 14. It's a reminder that like – and the Niners last year, not that anybody who's a Niner fan needs a reminder. This is the way it goes. And there was so much unpredicting, uh, unpredictable. And this is one of the first major chips to fall for 2021. Yeah, I remember when they drafted him, I had a friend in the NFL that told me, I like this guy a lot. I think he's really good. And I'm like, I, I feel like when I watched him, he was kind of an underachiever. And then at Florida State, you remember, it was toward the end of the Jimbo Fisher run. They have been a disaster. The Willie Tack – like the, he was an enormous recruit that signed with Florida State when they were still like 15, 16, right when Jimbo was still humming, and then the program went sideways. He was a top five recruit in the country. And then last year had a bunch of injuries. But I vividly remember watching a couple games going, God, this guy might be pretty good. <laughs> and clearly he was going to be their starting running back this year. So it's a blow because he's a very talented player, a high draft pick, and a starter. Now, if Can I add one gonna... more thing to that? Yeah. And it's an Achilles, not an ACL. So, so you there's lose a for chance he might never be the same. But who's to say in 2022 he's the same guy? Especially because as a running back, right, cutting, explosion, moving on your feet are pretty important. It's a devastating injury. It, it really is. Uh, but would you agree that if it's going to happen at one position – it is by far the most replaceable position. They, they rolled in, if you remember, to the Super Bowl when Todd Gurley's knee was getting weird toward the end of the season. Remember they signed C.J. Anderson like off the scrap heap? Yeah. And he, was a, and he was fine. And they were winning playoff games with him. So in this, in this offense, historically, I think Kyle's a good example of where he'd tell you, and Mike Shanahan would tell you, I understand BPA, and there's a chance when they took him two years ago, I guess two drafts ago, it was 2020 draft, the Corona draft. He might've been the best player on their board by like 10 spots. So it was like, well, are we sticking with BPA? Or are we just not going to take a running back? I would probably in this offense, stay away from running backs in the first 60 picks. And it, that's not like revisionist history, but it just, they do go down a lot. This is worst case. But as you see with Kyle, they get hurt. As you see with Sean McVay, like guys get run into the ground. I mean, the Packers last year took a running back in the second round, and that guy's good, A.J. Dillon. But it's like, you, I would like, if you're running this offense, we can find guys, I would probably go no earlier than the middle of the third round. Yeah, that would I mean, be my philosophy. That's where the Niners took Trey Sermon, like you said. I do understand going, yeah, it's it's a committee position, but you need depth in your committee that you trust. And if you like one of these guys so much more than somebody else, I mean, even though it's a committee position, go back and look. I mean, when he, even when he was hurt uh, or not himself anymore, right? Todd Gurley was still – he yeah, led the Rams produced. in rushing for like seven years straight, yeah. six years. Maybe it was – I got to go back and look. But obviously – I think it was, it, was, it, was shor it was shorter than you think. It was like four. See, I thought it was longer than I thought, but I'll go back and look. You know he's like out of the league. Well, I, that's why I saw a gif of somebody showing him, like, walking down the ramp, you know? Well, I don't yeah. think he has a team. Oh. And I, I bet if you Google Todd Gurley, my guess, oldest 28, like, he ain't 34, you know? Honestly, if you told me Todd Gurley was 26, I'd believe you. I, I mean, he's just – but this this is the pushback to where you got to be very careful about this position. They just – where I come from – my, my dad was a farmer. My brother's a farmer. There's a big difference between miles on a truck when it's on the ranch and a car like me and you driving around a city. Right. So uh, uh, 50,000 miles on the ranch is a lot different than just driving around the Bay Area, Sacramento, right? 
It's just not the same. And I think it's fair to say, like, even wide receivers, we don't ever go, like, a lot of wear and tear on Michael Thomas, right? Just running routes. The wear and tear when you see, like, damn, he's only averaging 3.9 a carry. Well, guess what? Every single one of those 3.9 a carries, you're getting destroyed. When do you ever just, like, he just got tackled by no one, hit the ground, up, didn't hurt. (laughs) That does not happen. It is... I, honestly, it's like ranch miles meets like hill mile. It's it's really really hard on your body. They they have like five six year shelf lives. Even even Christian who is awesome and Kamara, Alvin's probably different because they really, if you watch a Saints game, they really hammer him between the tackles as less than all the top guys. Most of his work comes in the passing game, and I would say outside the tackles, where even McCaffrey. I don't blame him. Why wouldn't you run him up the gut? He's a great running back, but it just takes a toll on you, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, you said it, but I'll repeat it because I say it all the time. You see it with the Niners receivers, too. We see it with Debo Samuel, too. And I don't think it's an accident that Niners running backs have been hurt a lot. I don't think it's One an thing, accident. Gurley, by the way, John, every 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Or not how 20, old is he? Sorry. He led them in for five straight years of rushing. Somebody just said in the chat that, He's signing with the Ravens. I don't. Is that true? I think he went to on like a visit. He'll, yeah, he's twenty six. He'll be twenty seven in August. <laughs> Isn't that pretty nuts? Nuts. Twenty six years old guy. The other One thing, thing is, is someone, if, if running backs are ranch cars, they have to like drive for three years on like another ranch before you even get them. Yeah, unless you draft them. But I mean, they're college. They oh, play college football. College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Major right. college football. One thing I was told by someone with the Jets, and they're like, you know, it's been pretty eye opening to us. And it was a reason we didn't draft the other North Carolina running back, and we took the wide receiver in the second round. Is when we watch Lafleur coach, the offensive coordinator that comes from Kyle, and Kyle, who taught him, who obviously learned from Mike, who Sean has learned from, that uh, his other Lafleur brother, they've all been taught. The number one thing he says they hammer home, hammer home, finish strong, finish north and south, finish up the field. And you watch the Niners, you watch the Rams, you watch the Packers. It's just up the – and it's like the Jets, when they philosophically talked about – remember, they had a top pick in the second round. Should we take the best running back on the board? They're like, well, let's take a guy a little bit later and take a sweet wide receiver. That's how they justified it. Kyle and Mike clearly do it that way because they the, their main coaching point – I've never noticed this in practice because I'm not really like listening that hard, but I think the scouts – The music is way too loud. The music's way too loud. The scouts are have to factor this in because they're fucking drafting these players are like they are just they hammer home violence. And in fairness, the coaching points, wouldn't you say the Niners running backs run very violent? Well, remember, yes. Again, it's it's not accidental that they get hurt. Remember when we sat down, you and I and did a video, we watched Elijah Mitchell's tape from college, the Niners sixth round running back. Right? He's very Shanahan offense for guy. Louisiana Lafayette. And you watch him and you go, okay, he's not necessarily the fastest guy on the field, but he has one mission, and that's to run a straight line forward as fast as he can the second he gets the football and not slow down for anybody. And you yeah. love it. You love like that style of football is awesome, but it is this ain't this ain't the greatest show on turf. Go down as soon as you catch the football. Right, this is this is about yak. <laughs> yeah. This is not about sliding and just taking your fourteen yards. I, I I think they really hammer home punishment, and it's why actually a lot of. I think if you look back and did a deep dive, why so many later round guys can truly excel in this operation, starting with his dad and starting all over now with these guys, is because. They, if you're an undrafted free agent or a seventh round pick, and I would imagine those first couple training camp practices, you truck a guy or run through a guy. Can you imagine what that coaching, when just the coaches meet, they fucking love him. They're like, oh, this guy's got a shot. Yeah. And he's already, no one I bet jumps up faster through like two training camp practices, potentially than a running back in this offense. Like this guy's got, this guy might make the team. I can't wait to watch this guy in a preseason game. Let's get, get this guy more reps, coach. Yeah. You know? Playing with desperation. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the other thing. There's you opportunity. You can't play like that for five years. No, but there's opportunity on all these teams because there's five. You're like, remember looking at the Niners depth chart running back over the years? Even last year, last couple of years. There's five, six guys. How's anybody going to make an impact? Well, there's going to be opportunities for everybody. We've seen it. Jeff Wilson Jr., great example, right? Yeah. You play with in this – there's just opportunities for 
for everybody at that position because you need them all. I'd probably rather so, play running back for like Sean Payton or Andy where they just throw me the ball and I can get out of bounds. Oh, yeah. Just... <laughs> Cl- Clyde's like, God, you guys are crazy over there. <laughs> Andy, give me my 70 catches. No doubt. Kamara's like, pay me like a wide receiver. And a running back, and, a, and a, when a quarterback takes some of your goal line carries, like he took some of my touchdowns, but right? I'll let him <laughs> jump over the pile. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> 